The miniaturized computer at the very heart of this system is our story today on Science Reporter. Hey there, Caleb Logic from DIY Video Guy here, and today I'm joined by Greg Farnham from Lensbro to Go, and in this video we're going to discuss the reasons you'd rent or buy a cinema lens instead of filming your videos with a still photography lens. Be sure to also go check out the other video we're making today on the Lensbro to Go channel where we compare a $2,000 camera to a $20,000 camera. Different cinema style lenses come in many shapes, sizes, mounts, and price levels, just like lenses that are built primarily for taking photos. The first thing you'll probably notice, other than how much larger a cinema lens is, is how it's geared. It's usually geared for both pulling focus and changing the aperture. The opening through which light reaches your camera sensor, or the aperture, on most still lenses can only be controlled electronically by the camera you're using. You can change it in increments of one third an f-stop at a time, f3.2, 3.5, 4.0, and so on. But with a cinema lens, you can get much more precise by manually changing the aperture very, very smoothly, like when you're going from a bright outdoor setting into a dimly lit indoor environment. Some still lenses, like the Sony G Masters, now allow you to de-click the aperture ring, though. The gears on the side of a cinema lens allow the addition of a follow focus system for you or a first AC to smoothly change the focus or aperture with either a wheel next to the lens or a wireless system, which is helpful when you're using a gimbal or a drone. Pulling focus on a cinema versus a still lens is way more precise and smoother too. Some still lenses from Sony or Zeiss use fully electronic focus by wire systems, where the faster you move the focus ring, the more it changes focus. A cinema lens, on the other hand, is completely analog, with markers on the side for focus distance. A cinema lens also has a much larger focus throw, or how much you have to turn the focus ring to change the focus. On a still lens, you might only have around a quarter of a turn of the barrel to rack focus. On a cinema lens, you get up to two or 300 degrees of rotation. The focus ring on a cine lens also has built-in hard stops at infinity and at the closest focus distance. This makes it much easier to get that critical focus, which is even more and more important when you're filming in 4K, 8K, and even beyond. Another focus-related feature of a cinema lens is they typically have less focus breathing, or changes in how much is in your field of view. If you watch the edges of your frame while you change focus on a still lens, you'll see more or less visible in the frame which can be quite distracting while racking focus between two objects. On a cinema lens, you'll get less or no focus breathing on the edges of your frame when changing focus. Another focus-related feature is that if you're using a zoom cinema lens, it will be par focal, which means as you zoom in and out, the focus distance will stay the same. This isn't the case when you're using a still lens and you'll probably need to refocus ever so slightly if you zoom in or out. Another feature of cinema lenses is they have more blades on the iris that opens and closes as you change aperture. Inside this Canon Cinema Prime lens is an 11 blade iris, which means your bokeh ends up being rounder. A Canon L series lens has only eight aperture blades, leading to a more of an octagon shaped bokeh. Another benefit of filming with cinema lenses comes when you're shooting with multiple lenses. First off, a set of cinema lenses from the same company is created together and the glass is coated to make sure all of them are color matched. Next, they are usually all the same physical size no matter which focal length you use, which means the gears for changing aperture, zoom, and focus are in the same place. They also have the same size barrel and threading for add-ons like neutral density filters or diffusion filters. This makes changing between lenses way easier and faster when using rails, matte boxes, and follow focus systems. If we look over here, I can show you more about how the computer operates. Another major difference between stills and cinema lenses are T and F-stops. Now, without getting too technical, an F-stop is the ratio between the diameter of the aperture in the lens, or the size of the opening, and the focal length of the lens, like 30, 50, or 85. The issue with f-stops on still lenses is as you change between different focal lengths, the amount of light you let in can change. So even if you use the same f-stop and camera settings, your exposure values will be different on different lenses ever so slightly. On the other hand, t-stops used on cinema lenses measure how much light is being transmitted, hence the t, to the sensor. This means if you use the same t-stop on multiple cinema lenses, even at different focal lengths, the exposure should match exactly on all the lenses used from the same set. Other considerations and benefits of cinema lenses are usually better controlled chromatic aberration, which is that color fringing you may see on the edges during a bright scene, less barrel distortion at a wider angle, and more consistent edge-to-edge -edge sharpness. 
Cinema lenses are also almost always heavier, which makes running and gunning or traveling with them a little bit more difficult. As far as cost, you're generally gonna spend four to five times as much for a cinema lens from a major manufacturer like Canon or Zeiss as you would on the stills equivalent. The reason for this is not only the better construction and materials, but the coatings and the testing and the precision machining and assembly that goes into making sure all of the lenses in a set match. Some of them even use the same exact internal glass you'll find on their still lenses, just housed differently. So if you don't need the benefits we've been talking about, you can save some money there. Also, you may want to use the lenses for dual purpose of photo and video, so that may influence your decision as well. There are some companies like Rokinon that make cinema style versions of their lenses that are close in price to their photography counterparts. Just know you won't get autofocus abilities when using cinema style lenses. What it typically comes down to is your project size and its budget for whether you choose a still or cinema style lens. But now you're ready to go make that choice, whether you're renting or buying, and when doing so, you'll know all the features you'll get. Definitely go check out the other video Greg and I made today where we're comparing a $2,000 GH5 to a $20,000 Red Scarlet W and all the differences you get when you get a more expensive camera. So definitely go subscribe to the Lens Pro to Go channel for more video and photo gear reviews, comparisons, and tutorials. Thanks, Greg, for bringing all those expensive lenses for this video today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. And you've got all this squeezed into a little box. How did you do that?